This video is sponsored by Taskade. I like the idea of a paper lesson planner. It's organized, it's nice to look at, and in a lot of ways it can serve as more than just your lesson planner. But I can't easily share those lesson plans with anybody else. I can't easily keep track of any websites that I plan on using during my lessons. And I have to remake these paper lesson plans every year. And that ends up costing me a lot of time and energy, not to mention how much of a problem it'll be if I forget my paper lesson planner at home. Let's take a look at a couple of digital lesson planner options that I have and see which one will suit my needs. <laughs> Planboard is our first option and it is like having a digital version of that paper planner. Let's take a look at what a planned out week could look like. This is where I would spend most of my time planning. You can see Monday through Friday. You can see I've got A day, B day schedules here and I can customize it to whatever kind of bell and class rotation I have. I really like the color coding that each class has so I can see at a glance when those classes meet and what's happening in those classes throughout the week. And I like this sticky note area at the top as a a place to put reminders of what I need to get done before school starts. I can click on any class period to edit the lesson plans for that day, and I can format things to have headings to make things a little bit easier to see, bullet points. I can embed a table so that way I can track any student progress or any student groupings that I may want to do for that day. I can embed a YouTube video, which is always nice to be able to embed a YouTube video as opposed to going directly to YouTube because then you have the recommended and suggested suggested videos showing up and you get to hear your students yelling out, can we watch the new Mr. Beast video? And I can go ahead and link out to anything that I need to reference. So maybe this Khan Academy square root practice for the students. And what's nice is I can actually attach a learning standard for this lesson. You can see right here, I've got this 8.2 point B, which is about square roots. And then if I want to add or change standards, I can find all of the ones that I've added for pre-algebra, which in this case is sixth, seventh and eighth grade Texas Teeks standards, but Planboard also has any other US state standards as well as Canadian and Australian, and maybe some others. I couldn't find a full list of what standards they have. So if I wanna see which standards are about square roots here, I can just type in square roots and see, all right, we've got an eighth grade standard. All right, and that is the one that I added. You can also see that I have a Google Docs attachment down here, and this is a graphic organizer that I give to my students, and they can either have a printed out version or use this digital version to keep track of what they are learning with square roots. So since my second and third period pre-algebra classes are pretty much doing the exact same thing, I can go up to options and then just copy this entire lesson to those days for second and third period. And then if I do that, I just need to go into the second and third period classes and then make any changes. Like I'm gonna have to change the names of the student check-ins for my second period class. And since a lot of my lesson plans follow the same format, when I go to a new week, I don't have to recreate everything, but I can actually create a template for these lesson plans and then and have a starting point uh, to go off of when I'm ready to dive into the lesson plans for that week. And from this week at a glance view, I could also go into a specific day and then just see everything for that specific day, as well as the bigger picture of the month. I only have lesson plans for this first week inputted, but you can see all of the lesson titles as well as the little sticky notes if you have anything written in them. Everything I've talked about so far is in the free plan of Planboard. Unfortunately, you can't share your lesson plans with a link on the free plan, but you could just create a PDF version of it and then share that PDF. And as I was working through Planboard, there wasn't a super intuitive way on how to reuse some of my lesson plans from year to year. They do have a resources section as well as these unit sections, but I couldn't really tell the difference between the two of them. And of course I could always go back to last years and cycle through and find those lesson plans, but it just wasn't a very intuitive process for reusing lesson plans year after year. Planboard isn't very optimized for any kind of collaborative work, particularly on their free plan. And so if I want an easier way to reuse lesson plans year after year and want something that's a little bit more collaborative, I can use Taskade. So here's my same square roots lesson plan in Taskade. You can notice I've got this nice little banner, which is nice to add to that. I can create an emoji, a little icon for this specific lesson since this lesson we use Cheez-Its. I got a orange little square. I have different formatting features like a heading. I've got paragraph and bullet points. I've got check boxes. I like 
that I can highlight and underline these in different colors to bring emphasis to different aspects of my plans here. I can embed a YouTube video here in Taskade as well, which is nice. And I can link out to anything, whether it be the Khan Academy exercises or the Google Docs graphic organizer for the students on this lesson. I really like that I can fold and unfold different aspects of any part of this lesson, whether I want an entire section to fold and unfold or even the entire page. If I want to fold everything, see everything at a glance and then slowly expand as I need to, I can do that or just fully unfold everything out. And right now I am looking at the general list view, top to bottom, pretty basic format. I love that I can change it from list view to a board view where I've got this left to right, every section is its own column and I can, I can add to stuff, I can check things off in the same way as I did in the list view. There is also a mind map view which can be really powerful if I wanted to do unit plans and I got unit one and then subsections of unit one and then each section here I can fold and unfold the same way that I did in my list view. It's just a, a completely different view of all of the information. And so I love the versatility in that regard with Taskade. As far as collaborating on a lesson, there are three ways that I can choose to collaborate on this lesson plan. Me and any other teacher that has access to these lesson plans can make specific comments about any section in particular. And so if I wanna leave a comment about the learning goal, I can see, oh, there is a comment right here for the learning goal. And then any of the comments that were made about the learning goal will be listed right here. If I wanna make a general comment about this lesson and not about one specific section, section, then the chat feature is going to be more ideal for that. This chat feature is attached to this specific page. This is a great place to write down the things that worked and didn't work. So that way, when you come back to this lesson next year, you have that documentation right there attached to this lesson and you can make the iterations that you need to. The third way that I can collaborate on this document is to actually start a video chat. If anybody that has access to this lesson clicks on start video chat, we will all be able to see one another in this little video chat box while we're looking at the actual specific lesson within this page. So this is one specific lesson. You can see that I actually have a folder for each of my classes and the various lessons that I have here in my pre-algebra class or the projects in my robotics class. But I also need a way of knowing, okay, what exactly am I doing on Monday, January 4th? And so I can create a weekly planner. And this weekly planner is gonna pull everything together that I need for that specific week. I like the board view a lot more than the list view for a weekly planner setup. My first column, I've got reminders for the week. And then if I expand these, I can see the things that I wanna get done before school. And when I expand first period, I have a link to the actual Square Roots lesson plan that I had been writing earlier that I can click on and see everything there. And then I can go back and then see any anything specific to that class period, like the different check-ins for the students or any other notes of what we may be working on during class, I can put right there. Now, I like this, so that way the stuff that I'm reusing year after year kind of stays a little bit separate from my day-to-day -day notes of what I need to accomplish in the classroom. And of course, I can expand my second and my third period here. Aesthetically, I thought it looked nicer to kind of have this classroom of the future background, and I added these different emojis to this the specific class period just because I think it looks kind of fun. And if I want to see everything, I can just go ahead and unfold the entire week and have it all there visible to me. I can also create a template. So the next week that I want to do this, everything is pretty much ready to go for me to fill in my lesson plans and I don't have to reformat everything all over again. Everything that I've shown today on Taskade is on their free plan. In both the plan board and Taskade lesson plans, you may have noticed that I included several options options for my students, not only in how they did the work, but also in how they were being assessed. Student choice is a key component in something called universal design for learning, which is all about making your classroom experience as accessible to as many of your students as possible. We're creating a teacher professional development platform called 21st Century Teacher to teach teachers how to implement universal design for learning using technology in the classroom. We're only accepting the 
first 250 educators that sign up for 21st Century Teacher, and we're launching soon. So if you want to join the waitlist, be one of the first people to get the opportunity to enroll in 21st Century Teacher, use that link that's popping up on the screen. It's also in the description of this video, or go to newedtechclassroom.com slash 21st Century Teacher, and we will see you over there.